One of the most general theorems about the Hausdorff dimension is a lower bound on the product, a Cartesian product of Borel sets. This in general can be strict. In fact, I read that um, zero dimensional sets can multiply into a set of Hausdorff dimension equal to one, but unfortunately I don't exactly recall the resource to reference here. Uh, this in strictness possibility also shows that in general we cannot have Fubini type theorems. Interestingly, we will give a proof of this, but only because we will use a deep result due to Frostman, which that one we will not prove. However, um, the deduction of this theorem from Frostman's lemma is quite easy. So what is this Frostman's lemma all about? We have to first uh, just fix this notation that um, that with the typo removed, uh, the set of sorry about that. The set of all measures, Radon measures on our n, that have compact support, and that support is contained in the set A. And also the total measure of the space is positive and final. So we call this space MA. The idea is that if A itself is a nice, say, compact manifold, then if we take the measure of the on the manifold, it satisfies these conditions. But of course, uh, that doesn't have to be the case. We don't even have to be in the uh, integer dimension. What Frostman's lemma remarkably says is that if you have a Borel set, the condition that it has positive S-dimensional Hausdorff measure is equivalent to the fact that there exists one of these measures with this upper L-force regularity. The measure of balls of radius R is... dominated by the s power of the radius. For all x in Rn and all R in R, for all R positive. This part is actually um, just easy. If you have it for this, then if you move outside the set, then you probably have a smaller measure, not bigger. So the, this, this equivalence is really uh, what will make the proof of the product, dimension of product set proof really easy. Uh, Frostman proved this indeed in 1939 for closed sets, not just bo not all Borel sets, and even Matilla's books proves it for um, closed set basically. It allows also for union, countable union of closed set, but that is not uh, much more improvement compared to how much more work it takes to go from closed sets to Borel sets. Uh, I will talk about other applications of Frostman's lemma to a few other things in a separate video. So for this video, let's focus on deducing this lower bound on the dimension of product set using Frostman's lemma. So we are again proving that the dimension of A times B, where A and B are Borel so that we can apply Frostman's lemma is no less than dimension of A plus dimension B. Okay, so where do we start? Uh, to get any grip on this, we bring in Frostman's lemma immediately. So, according to, the, to Frostman's lemma, if, if we assume that dimension okay I, I'm assuming that dimen the Hausdorff measure so the dimensions of a and s are respectively a and b are respectively s and t and I'm also adding this assumption that these are 
positive. And I don't see following Matila's proof why I can assume this. I honestly didn't give this much thinking, but I think it's just uh, something that can be arranged or the case of equal to zero is probably um, trivial or something, but, but let's not get locked on that. So if this is the case, then there exists measures and V. So this corresponds to, mu corresponds to A and mu corresponds to V such that, okay, nu, mu of every ball of radius R is bounded by R to power S and nu of every ball is bounded R to power T. So, um, here doesn't have to be the same one. So this will be for every x, for every y in Rn, and for every R positive. So this way we used one direction of Frostman lemma. Beginning from this, we deduce the existence of that. Now we want to go in the backward direction for the product set. So first we build the Frostman measure for the product. So claim, which is just um, a matter of definitions, this product measure uh, is actually in, this, in, the, in the set of measures M A cross B. Uh, its finiteness is its uh, compact support and also this upper bound that this measure, the product measure, apply to any ball in the, in the space R. So this is now sitting in the space Rn plus M is bounded by Rs times Rt, which is just Rs plus T. So all of these claims follow from just definition of the product measure. One, for example, this one follows immediately from the fact that the product measure uh, is bounded by uh, the product of measure of the projections. So if it comes from two parts, if this ball um, itself can be written as product of two balls, and then if you apply this to mu to that and then nu to that one, then individually we have these bounds and by the construction of product measure um, that carries through. So now we have an, a measure in the right space with this upper bound. So therefore Frostman in the backward direction tells us that the H S plus T of A cross B is positive. And whenever you have H to sum to any number of a set positive, that by definition means that the dimension of that set is at least S plus T, which for us was dimension of A plus dimension of B. Okay, sorry for this uh, lack of attention to the case of these being zero. And uh, let's say I leave it as an exercise for myself, first of all, to, to decide what to do in, in that situation. Okay, um, there we go. We see that this rather straightforward proof of this lower bound, but uh, indeed that is not a trivial theorem and uh, Frostman's lemma was, was the key ingredient there. So next video, we'll talk more about other applications of Frostman's lemma and uh, carry from there on. 
Thank you so much for watching this video again and have a great time.